Hey, what's up? Jess and I'm here with a video and as you read the title it's a Q&A video um, I haven't been on YouTube for a long time and your girl's just back like so many things has happened since probably the last video the last video that I did post I think I was doing a review on the baby Breeza well updated fast forward your girl had her baby already um he is now 11 months next month he will be one years old time goes by so quickly but anyways i just want to get into this video because your girl has so much content ready to come to you guys like super excited so recently i did a post on instagram which i'm gonna drop on my social media handles down in the description box as well as probably somewhere throughout the video um this might be a long video just because there's so many questions that people ask and i want to make sure i give you guys the best answers possible so let's just get on with it so the first question is what is your everyday go-to makeup so my everyday go-to makeup because I, I beat my face I did for this video um actually I had it on all day it's right now it's 8 30 at night so yeah my go-to makeup look I just really just put foundation concealer bronzer blush setting spray setting powder like that's as simple as it goes sometimes I'll do my eyebrows but just like the ending of my eyebrows but yeah, that's just really much it. And that's like every day. Now, yeah, that's pretty much my every day. Um, the next question is, are you going to go back to school to finish cosmetology? Yes, I am. Um, I actually recently took a break. I have like 846 hours. So in the state of Florida, you have to complete 1,200 hours. So I have like three months left. But I took a break because I do exclusively breastfeed my son and it just became very complicated to worry about pumping for the week or pumping for the next day. If you are an exclusively breastfeeding mama or exclusively pumping breastfeeding mama, then you know the struggle it is to have like that routine of a pumping schedule. And for me, it was just too stressful. And yeah, so I am going back to school. I'm hoping to go back in November. My husband is away working, so it just really depends when he gets back. But the goal is to go back next month and finish in January. So fingers crossed that happens. But yes, I am going back to school. Um, how do you manage separating all three kids' attention for you? So... Each kid has, so I have three kids. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have three kids. I have a girl and two boys. So my daughter is eight years old. My son is six. He will be seven next month. And then my other son, which is the baby he's sleeping right now, he is 11 months and he'll be one next month. So pretty much like, um, I just like, individually they crave for attention at different times so the baby he's a breastfed baby so he craves my attention all day every day um, my daughter she's more independent but she does crave my attention sometimes when she wants to do little TikTok videos and little things like that or when she really needs my help so it really all depends on the day they I have an experience when they craves my attention all at the same time but it's pretty much each and every one of them get the same of me so if i'm dealing with the baby and they need me the baby's gonna come along with me and i'm gonna give them the attention they need whether it's playing whether it's watching a movie with them whether it's answering a question or whatever it is um i just make it happen just as if you would give you if you're working and you have to give attention to everyone in your office you have to figure it out you have to maneuver around things so that's just really i just use that as an example because i really didn't know what else to use that example but 
um that's really just what i do um but i give them all my attention um so the next question is how is it being a mom of three so it's a lot it's a lot i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh it's easy peasy um because it's not so it's definitely a lot but i manage um i feel like there's so much going on and my children actually bring me sanity. I know, like you'd be like, oh, kids will drive me crazy. But they actually bring me sanity because it puts me in that mode where I'm just, ha I have to be focused. Um, and I feel like if it wasn't for them, I would be all over the place. Life for me would be a mess because I just wouldn't know what to do with myself. So honestly, it's just i don't know it's pretty normal to me i feel like once you have one kid just having more kids it's just the same thing just different age different time just different personalities but i love it and i wouldn't change it the next question is what products are good to use when you flat iron your hair so i'm looking around because i'm in my room and i have a lot of products so I will do a separate video as far as details on what are the products that I use. Um, when I do a wash day video, I will show you every single products that I use because I have my hair more straight than curly. Um, but I will say this, when it comes to straightening your hair, whether you naturally have straight hair or you have curly hair and you want to have straight hair, use heat protectant because that's going to be your best friend is your heat protectant as well as do deep condition treatments have leave-in treatments just to keep your hair nice and hydrated if you have oily hair like an oily scalp then you know tone down on the products that you use in your hair because when you do straighten your hair it will just be weighted down and looking oily and greasy and it just it's just a mess so strictly have a routine for your hair treat your hair like it's gold make sure you have a heat protectant and make sure you do have a leave-in conditioner if you don't like leave-in conditioner just make sure you deep condition your hair at least once a week or twice a week whichever you really prefer or what your hair can take so the next question is how do you find balance the way that i find balance is really by just having a routine and structure with myself um because i feel like without that there really would not be no balance because like i said i would be all over the place going crazy not having my shit together like i'm human so in order to keep a balance i make sure that i keep a routine and a schedule in place not only for the kids but for myself as well because I find it to work effectively. So the next question is your daily skin routine. So my daily skin routine, again, when it comes to products, that's why you guys need to go and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell because I have so much content that I'm about to be coming out with, especially, especially Christmas is coming, which is Vlogmas, and I am excited to do that because this will be my first time. So my skin routine, I'm just going to give you the basics, and as far as the actual products that I use, I will do a separate video on that. Um, so I cleanse my face. Um, if I have makeup on that day, I actually have a cleanser that actually also removes makeup. So I have the survey cleanser. I don't know why I can't talk. Like sis, get it together. I have the survey cleanser that actually is a cream cleanser and it also removes makeup while cleansing your face. Um, so I would do that and then after I get out the shower, I would just let my face air dry. Once it's air dry, I would go ahead and use a toner. After my toner, I would go ahead and use a serum and after my serum i would then go ahead and moisturize my face um and that's pretty much like my skincare routine because it's very simple and i do it for morning and night 
and I just love the response of my skin so yeah. so the next question is let's see because there's so many so many that I have to like oh my god like it's just like too much so okay let's see bear with me guys so do, 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 do. so the next question is dating advice for single divorced nanny so dating advice like literally what I would say is just like in a normal person being that you're a nanny like you deal with kids just like a mom and and a dad so i would just say depending on how long you've been divorced did you have time to heal did you have time to self-love because those are the things you want to do you want to heal you want to self-love although i have not ever been in a divorce i've been married to my husband for two years now but we've been together for seven and a half years um like i like i don't know i would say heal yourself heal yourself and just self-love and then once you do that like go out there find somebody whether it is that you're gonna take your time and you're gonna date and whatever it is like Go out there. Don't be afraid to find love again. Do you need to go out and just look like it's straight for marriage or whatever? Like, you don't necessarily have to do that. But um, go and enjoy yourself because you only live once. Life is short. Everyone wants someone to love. Get yourself out there, but first make sure that you had time to self-reflect with yourself. You had time to love yourself and know your self-worth. And go out there, sis. Like, go. <laughs> Run. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, what breast pump did you use and how would you review it? So, I use willow the reason why i was like doing that because i used two different pumps but the pump that i actually purchased um because my other pump i got from wick but i didn't get that till like four or five months ago but the pump that i have is the willow 3.0 um and i would review it as it's worth it um, I will do a separate video on that as well like a lot of these questions you're gonna hear me say that because if I go so detailed into it this is gonna be a very very long video and some of these questions do deserve to have a separate in-depth video so I will touch really briefly on it because your question is how would I review it so I will review it as, first of all, if you're a mama that works out or if you're a mama that's on the go all the time, I feel like a pump that's not going to have you on the wall at all times is going to be amazing. I like the Willow 3.0 because it's versatile. If, Like I said, if you work out, it does have an option to have like bags. Um, and it also has an option to have like the containers. So if you're the type of person that is worried about milk spilling out while you're moving around, then you will love the ba the bag option that it has. Um, if you're the type of person who's like, I don't mind just pouring milk straight out of the container into a bottle, it also has that option as well. As well as it does have an app, and I love the app because I'll show you really quickly. The app does keep track of how many ounces out of each breast that you do have um so it all depends like you know it tells you at the end of the day how many ounces it was that you pump depending on how long it is that you pump it tells you right left boob how much came out of there now the app also has an option where you can pause and play it strictly from your phone you don't even have to like press the button so i really love it and it is like a shape of a boob so for me i love it um like i said i will have a separate video that um is strictly reviewing the willow breast pump but it's amazing if you have the coins or if your health insurance pays for it go for it, sis, because it is worth it 
Um, the next question is, what advice would you give to full-time moms about breastfeeding and increasing their production? So, number one, stop stressing, mama. You're doing a great job. You're doing all that you can do. Um, don't let these overproducers on the internet um, scare you or make you discouraged or make you feel like you're not doing enough. If your baby is eating, your baby is gaining weight, your baby's not showing any signs of being hungry, don't worry about the supply that you're getting out. Now, if you are going back to work or anything like that, discuss with your lactation is other um things that you can do but what i can tell you just based off of what has worked for me in the past power pumping making sure you're getting a pump session in while baby is eating whether you're using a haka or a breast pump on the opposite side to catch that letdown as well as if you are up at night and the baby is sleepy because i would never tell you to wake yourself up at night to pump because we're tired we just had a baby like we need rest um if you are up at night like how i am up right now i could be pumping I personally just don't care for pumping um, because I nurse him and it's just easier for me. But if you have to pump, I would say stay hydrated. Um, I do like coconut water. I drink coconut water. I eat a lot of oatmeal. I drink a lot of water. Um, greater than drinks are good as well. Legendary milk has supplements that also help. Um, it's just like a trial and error because what may work for me may not work for you. But those are some of the things that I've tried. So you can try it and see if it does work for you. But I've also saw on TikTok that a mama drank a cup of cow milk and it helped. I don't know because I don't drink regular milk. I drink almond milk or oat milk, but I heard oat milk is another good option to help with production. So yeah, those are the things that should help. Um, but number one thing is stay hydrated. Make sure you get enough calories in. Make sure you're eating. Make sure you're not stressing. Take care of yourself. Get some breasts and know that you're doing all for your baby and hopefully that will help with your production but those are some of the advice that i can give because it did work for me now i did have to dabble in other things eventually because once something is working for you eventually it's going to stop and you're gonna have to find an alternative that's why some people don't suggest that you rely on supplements because it's just a temporary thing so I do know that pumping as much pump sessions as you can get in as possible and water and a lot of electrolytes and calories for your food, um, you should be good. Like, I hope that helps and I wish you luck on that. Um, I need makeup tips and how to install and set extensions. What kind of extensions are we talking about? Like what kind of installation? If you're talking about clip-on extensions, your girl got a video coming out with that so stay tuned for that and i will give you some tips on that and now you need makeup tips what kind of makeup tips is it as far as how to apply the makeup is it what kind of makeup because again that video is coming out soon too so you want to stay tuned for that and if it doesn't if that video does not answer your questions definitely dm me or definitely drop down in the comments in more detail of what it is that you want to know okay so next question if you could magically change one thing in your life what would it be nothing <laughs> I feel like where I am in life right now is where I'm supposed to be it is the plan that God had for me and I'm just loving life and I'm living it so I really wouldn't change anything um now here are some really really serious questions and like i said before i'm going to try not to make this video so long but these questions that are coming up are so these questions that i'm going to about to answer now um i'm also going to be doing a separate video on that as well um but i'm going to touch on it really briefly so the question here, hold on, okay, it says, what is some advice 
for moms who have children with special needs. So my advice would be cancel out all the negative noise. Um, also do your research on whatever the special need of your child is. Um, like I said, for those of you new to my channel, um, a lot of this I talk about on my Instagram. So you definitely want to also follow me on IG because I do touch up on that a lot. Um, but I have a six-year-old son that is on the spectrum. He does have autism and I and my daughter also has ADHD. So it is a lot. Um, my daughter... Her ADHD, it doesn't affect her as how the autism affects my son, in a sense, because my son, he's so smart, like, he's so smart. And it just took us a lot to get him to where he is. Um, he was diagnosed with autism at two years old, and he's now going to be seven. And it took us a lot to get him to where he is. And all I have to say about that is, find yourself a support system my support system is my husband and i do have a lot of family members like my cousins my parents my grandma my uncle and you know a lot of very close friends of mine that are very supportive when it comes to my son and are very educated as well on top of me like sharing so much of my son's life and so I'm surrounded by love and support and understanding because a lot of people don't understand what it is to have a special needs child. They like to put their input into, oh, I know this person that you know this person. You don't have a child with special needs. It's a difference from knowing and working with and having one that you're with 24-7 and dealing with the struggles that they may go through. So having a support system and just blocking all that negativity out and just knowing that you got this day by day, look for support groups, research on your child, get everything that you can do, use all the resources that are out there to provide to your child to just get them where they need to be. Because remember, special needs, whatever, I look at that as my child has a special power. And so I'm helping my child adjust with his special power. And that's just the way that I see it because he's, I love him as he is and I don't see him as different. I see him as having a special power that I just need to learn about. So the next question is, what is some advice you can give to full-time mothers? So, we're doing all we can, mamas. Like, we doing all that we can. A lot of people think full-time moms or stay-at-home moms, they have it easy and it's not a job. It is a job, okay? Not only are we taking care of our children and making sure that they have everything that it is they need, we have to take care of our home. We have to cook. We have to clean. We have to do so much outside of just being a mom like we have to be a mom 24 7 it never turns off being a mom but we also have to attend to other things in our lives because we are human so take it day by day you're doing a fire ass job don't let nobody tell you otherwise and just know you got this take it day by day love yourself get some personal development get some self-care some like just love yourself and understand that you're doing all that you can do and you got this like period sis um but yeah that's my advice take a day by day don't let nobody get up in your ear telling you otherwise because you got this so what is my go-to makeup routine so my go-to makeup routine is just like my everyday makeup routine the only difference is Sometimes I would add lipstick and sometimes I would add lip gloss. So I guess when it comes to my go-to, I would prefer to wear lipstick over lip gloss. But my everyday look will consist of lip gloss. But everything else stays the same. Like I don't really do eyeshadow and all of that unless it's like a full night out. Okay. So the next question is, what were your challenges with breastfeeding, if any? So, again, my challenges was pumping. 
um because i was too busy looking on social media and seeing all the over producers and i was just thinking there was something wrong with me but then i had to step back and reevaluate everything and know that I was doing all that I can do and my baby was not going hungry he was gaining his pounds he was growing lovely and I was doing all that I can do so my challenge was pumping which I'm pretty sure a lot of mamas can relate um but that was like the biggest challenge and when my son was cluster feeding because I couldn't do nothing I couldn't do nothing nothing at all like to leave him with my husband while I take a shower really quickly was painful like because the baby would cry I would have to get in and out the shower so quick so that was a challenging as well adjusting to life as a exclusively breastfeeding mama was the biggest challenge over um, pumping because this was out of the three this was the first child that I successfully breastfed for a year without any supplementation if you have to use supplementation there's nothing wrong with that i'm just speaking on my goal and accomplishment that i'm about to hit and i'm just so proud of that and i should be so i'm just saying so yeah that was my challenge um let's go so the next question was what are some tips you can give to keep your skin clear and moisturized having a skin routine having a skin routine paying attention to what you consume in your body and drinking lots of water so like i said products that i may use may not work for you so definitely when get stepping into the world of makeup or skin you have to do trial and error but getting on a skin routine is what's going to really help you keep your skin clear okay okay the next question is, what interested you to becoming a hair extensionist? So, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, so, your girl, actually, hold that thought because I want to show you. So, your girl is officially, as of June, a hair extension specialist with Bellamy Hair Extensions. I am so proud of myself. I've been wanting to be certified with this company since 2018, okay? So what made me want to become a Bellamy hair extensionist or just a hair extensionist, period? Um, I was wearing hair extensions, I wanna say since I was like 17 years old, 18 years old. No, lie. I started wearing hair extensions when I was 19. Um, and I was getting them done faithfully. But then when I moved to Florida, hair places were completely different than they were in New York. So then I decided to learn how to do it myself. Once I decided to learn how to do it myself and I was getting a lot of compliments to where people really thought it was my hair. And I was wearing like, my hair was this short and I was wearing like 24 inches. People were literally thinking like, girl, that's your hair and like, it really wasn't so it just gave me so much i know how i felt when i wore hair hair extensions like the confidence like this <laughs> inches for days like i just felt like a new person like and because of that i wanted other people to feel the same way i felt and so i have such a passion for it such a passion for hair extensions and so that is what really got me into it not about the money it's more about of course i want to make money but it's more about how passionate i am about it like if you know me <gasps> hey guys sorry about that so i am nursing my son let me try to not expose myself here um but i i just have the passion for it i'm i love hair extensions and so that is really what got me into wanting to be a hair extensionist um what are healthy food and drinks so a breastfeeding mom can intake so that pretty much answered it's the same answer to what can help um with the pro with producing more milk 
those same things i feel like is healthy i feel like just you know just taking care of yourself and sticking with water and fruits and your prenatal vitamins or postnatal vitamins those are the things that you would want to stick by because those are the things that are going to help you um so what got you into makeup so again i saw the craft of what people can do with a face of makeup and how beautiful and confident it just made me feel like I know I'm beautiful and I know my skin is good but I just fell in love with that that just I don't know that extra mm, that it brought to me so that's really what got me into it. anything that I've gotten into as far as the beauty industry is something that I had a passion for and I love Would I do makeup as a profession no but would I beat my face? Yes, I would. So I hope that answers your question. So the next question is how to find the perfect foundation. So how to find the perfect foundation. Finding the perfect foundation, again, is like skincare. So the things you want to ask yourself is what type of skin you have. Is it oily, dried, or both, which would mean combination skin. The next thing you want to ask yourself, what kind of coverage do you want? Do you want a super light coverage where it looks completely like skin? Do you want a medium to buildable? Do you want a, a full beat coverage face? That's another thing that you want to think about. Another thing is how long lasting do you want it? Do you want it super long wear that if you go to a pool party, it's water resistant, sweat resistant, transfer resistant? Um, like, are you going to be wearing it for long hours of the day? Are you concerned about what type of ingredients are in it? Are you looking for a skincare kind of foundation? So those are the kind of things that you want to look for. And then once you figure out in that kind of aspect of, okay, I know what skin type I am. I know what kind of foundation I'm looking for because I know that I want to wear it every day or I know that I want to wear it at nighttime when I go out clubbing or something or for a pool party and I know the amount of coverage that I want and I know that I don't want it to move. I want it to stay in place. Once you find all of that, take yourself to Sephora or Ulta and I say those stores only because they can color match you and give you samples of different foundations. So instead of having to buy the foundation right away and then have to return it, you can go ahead and try them out. And even if you bought the bottle, they have a good return policy. So you can go and return it and yeah, try it out and see what, what you like because again, my foundation may not be a preference for you so it's all about preference and skincare and skin type because you also got to make sure that you have a skincare routine because you can put any foundation on your face and if your canvas is not prepped the right way nothing is going to go on well hold on well or look well so also make sure you have a good skincare routine the next is how do you have the time to do everyday makeup with three kids so the two older ones they are in school um but like today on the weekend they were all home so while they were eating their breakfast and the baby was in his high chair eating his breakfast i was standing in the hallway mirror and beating my face it literally only takes me five to ten minutes to get my makeup on because it's so basic so that's literally how I get it done or while I'm holding the baby and the other two are doing whatever it is that they're doing, watching TV, laying down, or they're at school, I get it done that quick so it's not like too complicated or my husband's home so that's how I do that. The next question is how was adjusting to three children? So it still is an adjustment. It is really more on now I'm breastfeeding. Back then I probably breastfed for like a month and they were formula fed. So um, I would say the adjustment is really me adjusting to having a smaller baby again. Um, but other than that, I'm not really adjusting to anything else. It's just really adjusting to having a smaller baby again and breastfeeding. How do you manage life as a mom with children with different special needs so again it comes back to 
routine and schedule and that's really how I manage life and my husband he helps as much as he can um, but it's like I said, it's really all about routine and schedule without routine and schedule I don't think I would be able to manage anything and also Understanding their special needs understanding what it is to have ADHD understanding what it is to have autism so By me understanding those needs. I'm able to Manage life as far as being able to take them to their therapies being able to Go to their IEP meetings being able to communicate with them my daughter she's fully verbal my son we're getting there but that's really how I manage routine routine is, routine and schedule is like the biggest thing so the next question is having three kids what do you do for yourself what's your self-care so I don't really do much for myself the only thing that I really do for myself honestly is I just go get my nails done, my feet. Um, if I have to go shopping, if my husband is home, he'll stay home with the kids and the baby. Um, and I'll take that hour or two hours in my sh Target run or whatever for myself. Um, I try to take long, nice, hot showers when my husband is home just to take care of myself and make sure that I'm good. Um, I do a lot of personal development. Um, I was working out right before I got pregnant so that's another thing that I was doing for myself that I'm actually about to get on because I am a Herbalife distributor and I am on my Herbalife products so I'm just needing to add that routine so I pretty much take care of myself my body everything I possibly can when I can because I don't always have time to do those things so when I do have time to do those things I focus on what I need for myself, what what is going to make me feel good, and I hope that answered your question because most of the time I'm doing everything for the kids. So it says, besides the obvious, what keeps you going on your worst days, what makes you get up? So the obvious is obviously my children, and I just think of every day as a blessing. Every day that you wake up, you breathe air, you're able to live another day that's what makes me get up and keeps me going because like life is too short to just be sitting down and be living in sorrow and there's people that probably have it worse and you know that's just like what it is for me so what makes me get up is my children mainly my husband and just knowing that I like to look at things, things that may be a problem. I like to look at them as no problem because there are solutions for everything. And anything that may be out of your control, leave it out of your control. Don't try to control it. Just let it go and move on and know tomorrow's another day and you can try again. Like, keep trying and keep trying and keep living and keep moving forward. Like, that's just how I see it. So what's the best advice you can give someone who has kids with special needs? So love your kid, educate yourself on their needs, do all that you can. I believe I've answered something like this before, but either way, I love this topic and this question, but just you have to be your child's advocate. Always be your child's advocate, whether they have special needs or they don't have special needs. But children with special needs, sometimes they may or may not be able to communicate the, the things that other kids may be able to communicate. So pay attention to your child and be your child's advocate. And when you feel something in your gut is not right, follow it. But always stick by your child and always educate yourself because that's, that's just the best thing that you can do. So yeah guys, that was all the questions and I want to thank you guys so much. If this video is long, I am so sorry. I promise other videos won't be as long as this Q&A unless it is a vlogging video because I do a lot on my days of running around. But I hope I answered all the questions to the best of my ability. Also, I love you guys so much. Um, subscribe to this channel as i said before you don't want to miss out on all the interesting things that i do have coming um my channel is just gonna be like what my name says it's going to have 
what it is to be as a mother of three, what it is to be a full-time mom, what it is to be a cosmetology student, what it is to be a wife, what it is just to be living my life. So that's really what my channel is going to be about. Um, and I hope that all the content that I bring to you guys, you guys enjoy and love and can relate to. If there's any other things you would like to see, definitely drop it down below in the comments. Give some thumbs up to this video. Subscribe. Definitely going to come here and post up some vlogs. But if you want to catch the first snip of what I'm going to be vlogging about, you definitely want to go follow my Instagram. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. So, bye.